The intent of this video is to review the B-24's tail proximity fused air-to-air -air rocket defensive armament system concept considered during World War II. During bombing runs over the Reich's occupied territories, B-24's would be subjected to German bomber interceptor attacks. These attacks could come from any direction. This declassified table from a May 1944 2D bombardment division document titled Removal of Lower Ball Turret in B-24 Aircraft outlines the relative direction of the German bomber interceptor engagements during the period from November 1943 through April 1944. The two key columns are the B-24's gun station location and percent of station engagements. The B-24's tail gunner position not only had the most engagements at 30.5%, but this station also claimed responsible for the most enemy aircraft destroyed at 31.4%. The B-24's tail station seems to be the most active. This chart from a May 1945 B-24 pilot training manual outlines both the arc travel and ammo capacity of each of the bomber's gun stations. The tail gunner's crew station is armed with twin 50 caliber machine guns at 400 rounds per gun. The arc travel of the tail guns is 71 degrees up, 40 degrees down, and 85 degrees left right. To increase the defensive armament within the tail direction, Bomber Command mounted a triple rocket launcher attached to the B-24's fuselage underside like shown in this image and this view. The M-10 triple rocket launchers are the same rocket launchers adopted for the ground attack rolls launching air-to-ground rockets. M-8 high explosive rockets are loaded into the M-10 launcher in this view. The M-10 triple rocket launcher slung under the wing of a P-47 from the 353rd fighter group. The rocket launcher mounted on fighters are for the air-to-ground roll, not air-to-air. -air. This page from a 1945 research and development document titled Rocket Material outlines the characteristics of the M-10 rocket launcher. The tubes each hold a single 4.5 inch rocket. The tubes are plastic material. Any of these fin stabilized rockets listed can be fired. The M-10's MC system is 84 pounds. The tubes are 10 feet in length. The rockets are harmonized sighted with the fighter's machine guns. The rockets are aimed by changing the plane's direction. There are two mounting locations, a forward point and an aft point. This page shows the various mounting components of the M-10 rocket launcher from a 1944 War Department technical manual titled 4.5 inch aircraft rocket material. This image shows the details of the front and rear mounts. Since the rockets fire rearward, the front mount is here. Let's take a look at footage of the installation of the M-10 on a B-24. This fitting is a forward mounting attachment bolted to the B-24's tail. This fitting will accept the M-10 rocket launcher's forward deflection arm bracket attachment. This is a fire control box which will launch the rockets by the tail gunner depressing on these three spring-loaded toggle switches. This section will crank the M-10's aft mount up or down. The rockets can be reloaded in flight. This bracket is stationary. However, the M-10 tubes can rotate about this point when repositioning the aft end of the tubes for reload. The M-10 tubes are being attached to the B-24. The tubes are mounted at a 10 degree up angle. This image shows the orientation of the M-10 rocket launcher while in reload mode. The aft mount is cranked up into the bomber, exposing the tube end. The waste gunner reloads the three M-8 rockets from the rocket rack. The fire control switch box is located here, in control of the tail gunner. Like fighters, the launch tubes are not steerable relative to the plane. The bomber will need to pitch and or yaw to track and aim at an enemy interceptor. This chart lists components and characteristics of the M8 4.5 inch high explosive rocket. Key points include range is 4,000 yards, dispersion is 15 mils where 15 mils equates to 0.84 degrees, a 50 caliber machine gun bullet dispersion equates to around 1 mil, velocity is 850 feet per second or 580 miles per hour, the propellant burn time is between 0.12 and 0.3 seconds depending on temperature. The projectile is fin stabilized. Overall length is 31.1 inches and 4.5 inches in diameter. The full up weight of the M8 high explosive rocket is 38.1 pounds. The warhead's explosive fill equates to 4.3 pounds of TNT. The rocket's warhead is around 15 pounds. 
Couple thoughts about the effectiveness of the M8 rocket as compared to, say, the German 88mm flak gun. This chart lists characteristics and a cutaway of the German 88mm flak projectile from a 1943 War Department technical manual titled German 88mm Anti-Aircraft Gun Material. The weight of the 88mm projectile is 20 pounds, where the weight of the M8 rocket's warhead is 15 pounds. The 88mm projectile's burst charge is within the shaded volume and weighs 1.9 pounds, which is 44% the explosive fill of the M8 rocket's warhead. The effect of the M8 rocket is similar to a U.S. 105mm M1 shell, as discussed on this page from the reference shown earlier. This chart from a July 1945 20th Air Force Air Intelligence report outlines the lethal radius of various German flak guns. The German 88mm gun projectile is lethal to a bomber if detonates within 4 meters or 13 feet. The German 105mm gun is 8 meters or 26 feet. The German 105mm projectile has about the same weight of explosive fill as a M8 rocket at around 4 pounds. Although not exact, this data should provide some ballpark value as to the lethal distance of the M8 rocket to a German bomber interceptor somewhere between 13 and 26 feet. To increase the combat effectiveness of the rocket, a proximity fuse was adopted. This video outlines the function of an air-to-air -air proximity fused rocket. Detonation of this charge splits the casing into hundreds of sharp, jagged fragments which are hurled outward at tremendous velocity. It is these fragments which cause damage to any target that lies near the explosion. Once in flight, the fuse sends out radio waves, which are its feelers, continually probing the space around the shell in search of a suitable target. When the shell passes close to a target, such as an airplane, the radio waves are reflected back to the fuse, where they trigger a firing circuit and explode the projectile. The proximity fuses are threaded into the nose of the M8 rocket. This page from a 1945 United States Navy bomb disposal document titled United States Rockets and Fuses outlines the components and characteristics of the T5 proximity fuse. The T5 arms one second after launch. The T5 is an air-to-air -air or air-to-ground proximity fuse. The T6 is air-to-ground only. The T5 will self-destruct in 6 to 12 seconds after launch. The distance the rocket will detonate from a plane will depend on many factors, as discussed on this 1946 document titled VT Fuses for Projectiles and Spin Stabilized Rockets. Roughly, the proximity fuse will trigger the detonation train when the rocket is at a distance of 75 feet from the plane. Let's look at a B-24 M8 rocket in action. The launch again in slow motion. This screenshot of the launch shows the rocket flame shooting 15 feet back from the launch tube. This is why the tubes are not level and why the rocket tubes need to be on the outside of the bomber in a standoff bracket system. The heat of the rockets would reduce the structural integrity of the thin aluminum skin. This project never went past the testing phase. Couple channel thoughts on this overall concept. Bombers flew in a formation of 36 aircraft during the 1944 time period, like in this image. Had the tail rockets been deployed for safety, only the aircraft in the back of the groups could adopt the tail rocket launchers. The tail rockets were really not needed anyway. The threat from bomber interceptors had been dramatically reduced by the start of 1945. This chart shows a distribution of U.S. heavy bombers destroyed over the course of the war. The x-axis is a month and year. The y-axis is the number of bombers destroyed per month. The area plots in the body of the chart are the sources of destruction by either flak, fighters, and other. From May 1944 and on, flak was more of an issue than fighters, and by the start of 1945, when rockets would have been deployed, only 14% of bombers were brought down by German fighters. Target aiming coordination between the tail gunner and pilot would have been a challenge. The tail gunner would need to focus on controlling either his rockets or his guns, not both. Lastly, the T5 proximity fuse in M8 rocket as an air-to-air -air weapon was evaluated on this page from the reference shown earlier. This evaluation was for a B-24 under attack from a twin-engine German Ju-88 bomber interceptor. All relevant factors were taken into account in the analysis. 
The results of the study include, if the rocket is fired from 1,000 yards rearward with a dispersion standard deviation error of 17 mils or 50 feet, the damage from the rocket had a 1 in 10 chance of preventing the JU-88 from returning to base on a single engine. If it can return on a single engine, then there is a 1 in 16 chance of not returning from the damage of the round. If a delay of 50 feet is added to the fuse's detonation, the probabilities increase to 1 in 4 and 1 in 6 respectively. The probability of a crippling direct hit is 1 in 100. In summary, not sure if the air-to-air -air B-24 tail proximity fused rocket system would have been effective, and by this time in the war, it would not have been needed anyway, as the fighter threat had greatly diminished. If you've enjoyed this weapon systems review, please consider liking, commenting, and or subscribing to the channel, World War II U.S. Bombers.